and sorry, Toronto wouldn't be in the conversation if Drake wasn't successful. So for all the rappers who actually have an opportunity to become popular, they kind of got to thank Drake for that. Having achieved major stardom in the southern states, Drake became one of the most influential artists in his hometown of Toronto and also the world. He returned to Toronto victorious, in the perfect position to lift up the city and its music scene. But can the self-appointed six god live up to expectations? Nobody has come from Toronto in the same sort of way. No matter how many rappers have come from this city and how many rappers exist in this city, Drake is the one to really put Toronto on the map, to make it a hip hop city, when it has always been a hip hop city. The whole, the whole vibe of the city changed. I know from when I first started coming out here in the 90s. To see that it's producing number one artists, you know, it's, it's, it's very unique. That's the involvement of hip hop here. It evolved to be like, yo, this environment, these streets, these circumstances is able to express this hip hop on a, you know, top tier level. Hip hop is in y'all DNA right now. You cannot go to a club right now and they don't run an hour of Toronto artists. That's all they run. It's unheard of. For a long time, Toronto didn't have a sound. But then Drake and 40 got together. I've been trying to describe the sound that Drake created with 40 for years, I think. Like, people called it like the Toronto sound. Like, it's so dynamic, right? It has the like heaviness that you get from hip hop, but it has like this emotional depth. Whatever Toronto's sound is, Drake helps to crystallize it on tracks like 2010's Miss Me. It really put a stamp on the sound here. And then the weekend came and continued that vibe. You don't know what's in store. And for a long time, I think that everybody out of Toronto was trying to capture that energy. Toronto singer, songwriter, and record producer Abel Tesfe, better known as The Weeknd, is the preeminent R&B singer of his generation. He's one of the world's biggest pop stars and the twin pillar to Drake in the emergence of Toronto as a hotbed for urban music. The two have also had hands in each other's careers. It starts in 2010 when The Weeknd uploads three tracks to YouTube. Buzz builds quickly around him, thanks largely to Drake who posts the tracks on his October's very own blog. This put The Weeknd squarely on the industry's radar. Despite rumors that he'd be joining Drake's OVO Sound, The Weeknd ultimately launches a record label imprint of his own called XO. From there, The Weeknd goes on to sell over 70 million records and win many awards, including three Grammys. Drake and The Weeknd have collaborated. The Weeknd contributed songwriting and appeared on Drake's highly praised 2011 album, Take Care with songs like Crew Love and Shot For Me. Their work together helps to lay the foundation for Drake's signature sound and cements Toronto as the home of the new wave of R&B and hip hop. Now you hear the same sound that's coming from Drake's music into The Weeknd's music and you start hearing this regional sound that's developing in Toronto and you're getting very involved with it. They created the sounds that we feel in the winter. The city feels dark, it feels gloomy, and at the same time, it's very emotional. It, it draws on your heartstrings and coinciding with 
drugs and alcohol and depression and a lot of these things that you know our generation has gone through and still going through. It's hip hop evolving into something bigger than just rap. It was just different enough, you know what I mean? And it didn't sound like anything that was coming out of the US. The melody was introduced, you know, which made it more palatable and more accessible. I know a lot of people in the beginning, they were on him because of the singing, because of the melody. Uh, I hate when he sings. Still don't really like when he sings. But I always thought that he was a phenomenal rapper. What I tried to do was blur the lines so that even when I am singing, it just doesn't feel like singing. And even when I'm rapping, the cadences are almost melodic to the point that they stick in your head. Good music is good music, and this guy had the ability and the talent to combine both. Nowhere is Drake more vulnerable than on Marvin's Room, a languid, longing confessional that sees him call up an ex to tell her how lonely he is. Tell me, have you heard that lady? If you listen to music in the 2010s, there's like a Drake mood. It's a little insular, it's a little melancholy, and he's been very good at identifying artists in his wake who are indebted to the idea that he helped pioneer and also like continuing to carry that flag forward. Uh, I love cameras. <laughs> I while Drake has used his success to elevate artists signed to his own OVO label, the effect has also benefited waves of young Toronto artists who are now inspired to give it their own shot. Swagger Wright is one of those artists. I come from Humble Boulevard, like Southside Western Road, Southside Jane. Drake always says that little famous line, how did I finesse all of this shit from Jane and West? It was very inspirational, you know, like I'm I'm from this neighborhood and here's the, the biggest artist in the universe shouting out your neighborhood. You know what I mean? I, I sing and rap because I feel comfortable in my own skin. So Drake kind of taught us a big thing to be comfortable in your own skin. So that's what I'm pushing. Hey, hey. Just embrace like where we're from for once, you know? We don't even like our own self. But now I'm, I'm noticing a change, you know? People are starting to support more. We're still on the come up, you get what I mean? We don't just want to embrace, okay, that Drake made it. We want to embrace the whole Toronto scene. It's timeless music and now we're just kicking in the doors and getting in there. We're all making noise. We have the fastest growing scene in hip hop right now. So let's say Atlanta about 10 years ago, everybody was trying to come out of Atlanta, we're there. There's a lot of people who have followings, like we actually have a scene. I think it has a lot to do with the Drake effect and in people reacting, being proactive on the fact that there's a spotlight. 10 years ago, do you remember so many people talking about Toronto? The Drake effect for me is a very real thing. When you go to the States now, someone says they're from Toronto, people are more inclined to want to listen. People are more inclined to want to give you a chance. Why? Because we had this wicked successful artist and it's put his city on. It's overdue, this kind of attention, but it's dope that it's happening now. And when people say, okay, well, we got the attention and we're going to keep firing and we're not going to miss this opportunity, that's why you see all these teams hustling the way they're hustling. That's why you see these kids working how they're working. And we didn't always have that shot. It is the thing that makes people believe it can happen. And there's kids that only know that and they feel it is attainable for them. People never really rep the city the, the way that we do now. When we're looking at like this grand scheme of who's been repping their city, you can look at Tupac and Snoop from the West Coast, from LA. From the South, you have Outkast and Jay-Z from New York. I think the way he positions his relationship with Toronto is is strong. I mean, hip hop has a long history of repping your hood. That's in the blueprint of all like hip hop success, you know, and people people love that, people respect that. And that's, and that's part of hip hop culture, right? Hip hop has a very strong sports mentality. It's a very competitive sport. And so representing your team is part of it. 
representing your city is part of it. So he's representing his team just like a basketball player would represent the Raptors. You know? He was acting like a Raptor, right? <laughs> almost got, got a whistle on himself. So <laughs> for the tech. Yeah, he almost for the tech. Because he's traveling the world and he's 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 representing hip hop, but he's letting them know that yo, this is actually Toronto born, and this is the product of that city. He's embracing it, he's championing it, he's talking about it, he's actually putting it in people's faces. He kind of helped change the stigma of, of Toronto. We've said it all these years. I think now it's just with Drake amplifying that message, it resonates more with people. It's hard to think of Drake without thinking of Toronto. The rapper is fiercely proud of his hometown and loves to show the city off in everything he does. Heads up, heads up, heads up, heads up. In 2011, Drake opens the video for his quadruple platinum single, Headlines, in the Rogers Center, home of the Toronto Blue Jays. In his 2013 video for Started From The Bottom, Drake gives Toronto an unofficial underdog anthem and appropriately sets the video in Forest Hill, the Toronto neighborhood he grew up in. Even the area code always looked cool to me. In 2014, Drake mainstreams The Six as the new official nickname for Toronto. In February 2016, Drake and Rihanna shoot a video for her single, Work, at the popular East Toronto restaurant, The Real Jerk. The video turned the Caribbean eatery into a tourist destination for fans of both artists. But no expression of his love for Toronto tops the album artwork for views. The cover features an image of Drake sitting atop an iconic landmark, the CN Tower. A replica of the tower became the centerpiece of his performance at OVO Fest, the star-studded music festival he launched as a thank you to the city. That six love continues into the music on Views, which makes more references to his city than any other album, notably on tracks like Weston Road Flows. It's been flowing stupid since Vince Carter was on some through the legs arm in a hoop sh Drinking hypnotic with Glenn Lewis, I've been through it. All of that attention has helped put Toronto on the map, but perhaps more importantly, Drake has helped make the city a place citizens are proud to say they are from and that people want to visit. I'd like to just consider myself a messenger at this point. And if you like that album and you're looking for a place to go, then, you know, come check out the city. You know, there's great things here. I think it's strategic how he really reps where he's from. When you really represent an area where you're from and blow it up and make it hot, first of all, your hometown loves you and then makes other people want to go there, be there, and it kind of paints a picture of who you are as a person. <laughs> Got people talking about Toronto like it's a, a place in Brooklyn. You know what I mean? The six, like, huh? No one expected all of this from Toronto. Drake just was articulating everything that we were feeling. I'm on my worst behavior. Don't you ever get it fucked up. A DJ would put on worst behavior at a party and like the room would just explode. I really think of it as like a Toronto anthem. We can say motherfuckers never loved us was true. Man, motherfuckers never loved us. Drake being in this position has allowed this massive influx of money to also come in. Toronto really does get to benefit by being placed on a larger pop cultural map than before. We've done some calculations that show that 7% of all the tourism revenue that's generated in Toronto is attributable to Drake. He brings over $600 million in tourism revenue to Toronto, so 616 if you want to be precise. But it's also been good for him. It's been good for business and good for his brand. I think he really wants to establish himself as this like godfather figure of Toronto, where he can have a hand in everything and be a part of everything. What Drake gets out of being affiliated with Toronto is he can take ownership of any big wins. I mean, you see the way he inserts himself in like the Toronto Raptors win, like he really didn't have much to do with that, but that is now his win. He can use those moments to just keep levying his brand. I talk to a and guys from around the world and they're like, oh, your city's hot. Your city's, it's, it's you guys in Atlanta. I never thought I'd live to hear those words. You know, people are actually coming here, coming to our market, and that's because of the success of Drake. It took US acceptance to create Canadian pride. 
and I was just blowing people away. They didn't understand it. They'd never seen anything like it before. And I would always bring it home. Just being prideful of where I come from and what I come from. I feel like some people in other countries downplay what we come from and think that Canada is a lot different than what it actually is. You know, people are looking to Toronto now when they're looking for the next thing, which is really interesting to me. I remember, you know, when I first started in the music industry, people in the States were still making fun of us. A lot of people from the States on the internet act like they don't like Canadian people, but when I'm there and I'm like, I'm from Toronto, they're like, holy shit, you're from Canada? Like, Toronto, Drake's side of the time? I'm like, yeah. Like, yo, let's do something. You know, they want to actually, like, link up and do stuff and get stuff done. The attention of those who didn't give a shit about us before, now all they do is talk about us. That's why I find the biggest influence has been is not necessarily putting on new names and building infrastructure. The infrastructure that's being built is beyond music. It's bigger than music. Music just happens to be the tool to get there. So I'm very, I'm very proud of that aspect because it lends to a, a future where people will actually care about what our kids are going through. Drake no doubt helped put Toronto on the map culturally, but as his stature as an unofficial statesman in the city grows, so do the expectations on him. I think that he does enough for the city, right? But a lot of people, I guess, don't see it that way. I'm not going to be the OVO lawyer or anything that says, like, I know everything that's going on behind the scenes, but I know there's a lot of things that they do that they just don't really make a big public deal about. He technically doesn't owe anybody shit, right? Everybody who's an artist, once they make it and they, they help the situation of their people around them, their family, their loved ones, they technically don't owe anybody else anything. <laughs> Drake has branded himself as Toronto since the very beginning. He's also told Toronto, you know, I've got your back. But he projected his face onto City Hall, so that's claiming an ownership. In 2016, Drake met Toronto Mayor John Tory the night before he's given the key to the city, leaving no doubt who the city belongs to. The first time he came to my office, we had a wonderful, uh, probably 90-minute chat about the city and about some of the issues facing the city and about his love for the city. We were doing it sort of undercover, literally, of darkness. It was at night. He wanted to talk about the same things I did. And I think we were concerned about what we could be doing to make sure more of the young people in particular, you know, what we can do to support them and to kind of keep them in the right, heading in the right direction. I think it just comes down to when somebody has that much power and that much success, it's just like, well, what do you do with it? How are you wielding it? Coming from a city like this is just like, what have you done for me lately? In 2017, Drake's friend Anthony Fifth Suarez is murdered in the city's East End. RIP to one of our family members, our brother, Drake wrote on Instagram. But then, in a controversial move, the Toronto police used a press conference to publicly ask Drake to help solve the case. Uh, he was known to Drake. Uh, Drake was a friend of his. And I certainly would encourage um, him through his tweets to encourage anybody within the community to come forward with regards to any information that they have that may assist in solving his friend's murder. There was a layer of criminalization going on. If it were another popular artist from another genre of music who had lost a friend, I don't think local police would have called him to that work. I think that they would have respected the fact that he was mourning somebody and going through a great loss. That's ridiculous, right? And they would never ask that of a white celebrity. The public display doesn't make it easier for somebody to make a decision, because now everybody's looking at you. And everybody's like, what you gonna do now? You're not asking that of other people. Like, you're specifically targeting him because he's a rapper, he's adjacent to these people, and yeah, like, magically, his appearance will help solve this case. We're also talking about hip hop. It's not a good look as a rapper, as somebody who still has to represent for somewhat for the hood or from people from the hood. We knew that him and other people were mourning a friend that was killed, that was murdered, and he was publicly being called to do work for Toronto Police Services, an institution that most or all black people have the right to not feel comfortable or safe with in the city.
Drake's role as an ambassador sometimes conflicts with his interests as an entertainer, but there have been some issues he's weighed in on. Remember Me Toronto is a short documentary produced in 2019 by artist Mustafa the Poet. He gathered a group of rappers representing different areas in the city, including Drake, to talk about the effect of gang violence and gun crime in Toronto. It's just way more impactful if you put forth all that energy into a grind that, that, that people remember you and say like, okay, for, for this particular community, like I remember that guy came around, gave us all a chance. I will say I did appreciate his appearance in that video. A lot of those individuals who were down to merge together and come together to address a central issue, most likely or potentially uh, that was able to happen with Drake kind of being a centerpiece in many ways. And I think that was maybe the beginning of him trying to address some conversations. When it comes to his legacy, obviously he's going to be one of the greatest musicians to come out of here in a long time and maybe for forever, but I think his legacy can be even greater. Young people who may have nothing to do with music take inspiration from his story, take hope from who he is, and I think that's an opportunity that he's got and that he's begun to nurture that, and I think there's more that he can do. He can have the legacy of having gone out and marketed and put on the map his city, which is huge, but he could also have this, these other legacies which involve nurturing and encouraging young people through being inspired by him. I believe that Drake has instilled in the, in the younger generation a sense of, of, of courage. It's courage, guts. You get up, do what you want to do, and know that you can make the NBA. Know that you can get a Grammy. Know that you can play in the NFL. Know that you can go into medicine. Know that you can study law. Know that you can become a civil engineer and basically run the city. While Drake's repping of Toronto helped him carve out a unique identity and foster a dedicated local fan base, his music features world influences. Drake being a worldly guy, he, he was able to get it. For me to reach bigger, like I'm gonna have to kind of adopt the wave of some of these different areas. <laughs> 